Hi, I'm George Pearson, and after several requests, I decided it would be a good time to do a video about using downloaded templates inside of Photoshop Elements. Now, if you like this video, hit that like button, hit share, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. Check out my channel for all of my other Photoshop Elements videos, and take a look at my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. Now, it may seem like I'm jumping the gun a little bit here with another Halloween image. Let me show you one more here. Here's a Christmas one. So yeah, a little bit ahead of time, but if you are a photographer and you do photography for a living, now's the time when you're going to begin thinking about doing special announcements and beginning to schedule photo shoots for holiday cards such as Halloween cards and also Christmas cards. So it's not too early to begin getting set up for that. Now, I found a great site for downloading these kind of templates. These obviously can also be converted into regular Christmas card templates or Halloween card templates. It just depends upon the text that you have down below here. These are all set up for photographers to schedule photography sessions, but again, they can easily be used as just regular greeting cards as well. Let me bring up that site and I'll show you where I found these. Here we go, the coffee shop blog. And I have no affiliation with this site. I don't get anything for mentioning the site. I just found this was a great site for getting some free downloads. Now, if you're looking for downloads for Photoshop Elements, it's important to make sure that they are good for Elements. And this site tends to specialize in templates that will work with Photoshop and also Photoshop Elements. They're fairly straightforward and simple. This one here is for Christmas, as you can see. Now, this is just their big ad. The actual template is this piece right in there. And it's a free download. Notice that commercial use is OK. Here is the one for the Halloween card, and the card, of course, is that bit right in there. Again, commercial use is okay. It's a free download. Now, this uses different fonts in here, and if you want to have the matching fonts, she does supply a link down here for the fonts that are used in her card, but you don't have to use those fonts. You can choose your own fonts. And again, these are real easy and free downloads, and we'll see how to set these both up, how to adjust the fonts, and bring in pictures. Now, one last little thing. If you like these templates, if you use them a lot, I always recommend supporting people who put the work into doing this kind of content for the web. And you can support her by downloading and buying all of her templates in one big pack. So I'd recommend doing that if you find these of value to you. Okay, let's go ahead and get back over to Photoshop Elements. And we'll take a look at the basic templates for these. Let me just close these. Let's now open up one of these templates and make the adjustments that are needed. So I had the first one here. This is the Halloween template. And the first thing you get here is that there are some fonts used in this template that we don't have, at least I don't have on my system. You might have them on yours. And she does have links for these on her site if you want to use the same fonts that she is using. Just go ahead and click OK. Now Photoshop Elements is going to display a kind of a rough thumbnail of those fonts. You can see which ones they are. If you look over at the list on the right hand side of your layers, that little warning bit right here, those are all the fonts that are missing. We'll need to replace all of those fonts. Notice also that the photograph is not here, and that's easy to fix. Now, to replace a font, all you have to do is just take your type tool. Let me just do that. Take your type tool here, click into the font. It's going to tell you that you don't have that font. You'll need to substitute, so just choose OK, and then triple click, come down to your fonts, and choose a new font for that. I'll just scroll up until I find something kind of nice in here. I have, of course, you know, a thousand or more fonts on my system, so plenty to find in here. I've shown you other videos in the past where you can find free download fonts. They're easy to find. Okay, that one is a little bit too large. I'll just pull my size to the left a little bit here so it fits better. And that's a pretty good choice right there. There we go. That was fixed. Now this one, this is this little bit right in here. Again, grab the type tool, click into that. It tells that the font is missing. Just choose OK. Now it substitutes this with a standard font, which is the Myriad Pro regular that comes with Photoshop Elements. In this case, that works out just fine. I'll just go ahead and I'll leave that one. That's fine. Let's come down here where it says Book Now. Let's click into this again with the Type tool. Choose OK. And again, that changes it to that Myriad Pro. I think that's fine. I'll leave that. We're doing OK here. And then Layer 7. I don't even see Layer 7 on here. So even though it says it's not working here for us, I don't even see it. So I'm just going to leave that one as hidden. OK, so our text has been taken care of. All of our fonts have now been updated to fonts that we have on the system. Let's now bring in a picture over here. And I have one in my recently closed right there. This is kind of fun dog picture. I found this up on Pixabay. I just did a search for Halloween pictures and found that one. Looks pretty good. I'll just take this and drag it into the image like that. 
And because the graphics are all here on this mini session layer, I'm going to take my new layer here, put it on underneath that, so the dog is in behind that one edge. Now I can move the dog around and resize as I like until it looks good inside of that area. And as long as it goes just underneath a little bit, it's, it'll be a good fit for this picture. Just a little bit smaller here. And that looks good. And there we go. We've now used that template very easily to give us a nice Halloween card. Again, you can change the text in here, you know, for Halloween party, whatever it is you want to do, that's fine. Okay, let's just close that one down. I'm not going to bother saving that. Let's take a look at that Christmas card now. A couple more little things on the Christmas card. Again, the same basic problem here is that she was using fonts that I don't have on my system. And there are links to download these fonts on her website. So when you download the template, if you want to use her fonts, just take a look at those download links as well. Here we go. Once again, if we look over here on the right hand side, we can see the fonts that are missing. And the first one is this middle section right there. I'll take my type tool, click into that. It lets me know that the font is missing, choose OK. It replaces that with the default font. Click three times to select it, and then we'll choose a different font. Now I have one called Edwardian in here. It's up in the E's, which I use a lot, especially on my cards for Valentine's Day. It's right there, real nice kind of a typeface. Let me set that to a bold, and I'll bring the size up a little bit. That looks pretty good, and I think that fits rather nice right there. Okay, that one's done. Now down here, we can change our text on that. We'll come down to this one. That again, as you can see here, is a missing font. So I'll grab the Type tool, let's click into here, choose OK. That was replaced with that myriad bold again. Maybe I'll cover something a little bit different on this one. Let's first adjust our date down here. I'll grab my Type tool, click into here, and I'll set this one going from the 7th to the 12th, about five days. Looks good. And then back to our Type tool and triple click to select the whole thing. Let's choose a different typeface for this. I think something a lot bolder and more round. And I think I have one right up here. The Futura always looks good. I like the Futura. I'll go Futura Medium Italic. Looks good. Okay, let's come down to the next one. This is the 30 minute session, 10 edited images. That's this one right here. Again, missing the typeface. Click into the text tool. Click in there. That gives you that warning. Choose OK. And it's replaced by that default font. In this case, that's just fine. I'll leave that one. I think I'll move it in just a little bit though. There we are. Right hand side. That's our last bit of text over here. Let's click into that. Grab the type tool. Click in there. There's our warning again, and I'll leave that with the default replacement font as well. I think it's all fine. Okay, our text has been taken care of. Now we just have our two pictures to bring in. Notice we have these two shapes in here, and they're right down here. What you want to do here is to put your picture above the layer for the side that you're putting your picture into. So let's go up here to File, and I have a couple of images in here. I'll just float this over here. Now, if you don't have floating windows, let me just show you this real fast. Edit, come down to Preferences and General. And right here it says allow floating documents in expert mode. Make sure that is checked, and then you're fine. I'll grab the background layer here, drag it over. There we are. It's above that layer down there, that's where I want it. Let's now resize this by grabbing the control handles on the corner and get it so it approximately fits. I want to make sure that it, it fits into our space. It's a little small still, I'll come down like that so it overlaps. Okay, that fits into our space. You can see a little white line. Here's our white dividing line. So I can judge it from that. I'll move it over just a bit. Looks pretty good right about there, I think. Now, on this layer, right click where it says the name of your layer, and then come down and create clipping mask, and it puts this inside of that shape. There we go, that fits in. Okay, let's come down to the shape for the right hand side, and back up to File and Recent Files, and I have the other one right here. There we go. Again, floating window, I'll just grab it and drag it over like that. And let's get this positioned about right. Now it's a bit too large. Let me bring this one down. Well, I guess it's about the same size. So the head size is about the same size just for looks. That looks pretty close. And I'll find a nice spot right about like that. I think that looks pretty good. Hit the green check mark first. There we are. Get that set in place. Then it's above our shape layer. Right click on the name and choose create clipping mask. That puts it inside of that shape and it now fits inside here. And the last thing up here is we have this optional photo divider. It's right there. Right now it's white. If I take it out, it's kind of black. I'll put it in. Let's click on the thumbnail right here. This is your color. I can then make this any color I want. Let's just choose kind of a red color. And I think that looks pretty nice right there and choose OK. And there we go. So that's how to use these downloaded templates. Again, I'll have a link for the site that I use to grab these two templates in the description. 
but all the templates will basically work the same thing. Look for your missing fonts. If you can download those from the site, go ahead and do it that way, or just choose your own fonts, that's fine. And if you have a shape like this that's holding a position, simply use that clipping mask to put your picture inside of that shape to fit inside of the template. And again, the one thing to pay attention to if you are looking at templates for Photoshop, some of them will work, some of them won't work. Look for smart objects. If the template contains smart objects, it's not going to work inside of Photoshop Elements. So it's best if you can find templates that are designed for Photoshop Elements, then you should have no problems with that. And if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. Hit that bell icon for notifications of my new videos. And to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, look at my complete training course. There's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.